So how do you save stuff to local storage using Vue.js? Stay all the way to the end and find out. So last time we went ahead and created the basic app of our to-do app. You can see here we have, we can put a name in, hello, uh, mow the lawn. And we see it here in our list. And then we can hit the little X on the side here and delete the values out. So that is what we can do so far. So, but we can't edit the values at all. And also if we enter a value in here, like mow the lawn again, and we hit refresh, the value doesn't stay on the screen, it's gone. So we wanna find out, we want to uh, save the values to local storage, that way when we refresh it, it shows up. And we also wanna be able to edit values, edit to do. So let's do that first. So the easiest way to do that, first let's take a look at the main.js file, and this is where we have our view code. And if you don't remember, we have this add to do here, and we have the remove to do. So in the add to do, let's add a way to, uh, let's add in the local storage so it saves it. So if we go to our, so if you remember in Chrome, you can always go to the application tab, and you can see what you have in local storage. So I do have one key in here called to-do storage. Um, that's when I was testing it before. Uh, normally you won't see anything in here, normally. So let's, let's do this. We're gonna go up here and I'm gonna create a global variable, const. I'm gonna call it storage key. And I'm just gonna call it view 2.0 app. Well, I'll just call it to-do storage just to match what I did before. So now since we have the storage key, now we can go ahead and use the local storage. So the way to do that, if we look in MDN, you can find out there's something called local storage and we can set items and we can retrieve items. So what we want to do here is we want to set the item. So we're going to type in local storage dot set item. We're going to pass in the storage key. It's like a key value pair. So that's the key is the storage key. And the value was gonna be, we're gonna use JSON stringify, and then we're gonna stringify the to-dos app itself, the to-dos list that we created up here. So if we save that, and when we remove, we also kinda wanna do the same thing. We want to, we wanna set it as well. And just for the heck of it, we're gonna go ahead and delete the to-do so there's no default one in here. So I'm gonna refresh it. You can see there's no default. So I'm gonna add a value. Let's do mow the lawn. Great, you can see down here. Can you see it? Yep, you can, it's a little hard to see, but it says to do storage here and it has a title. So we know that it's definitely adding it. So that that's good. If we add another one, blah. You can see that there's two of them in there. Yep, because there's two in there, so it's it's saving. Now if we refresh, we could see the title, it's back to nothing, but it did save it into our local storage here. So to retrieve it, we need to figure out a way to do that. We There's a few ways to do this. One way I like to do is there's something called the Vue.js lifecycle hooks. And these are methods that are initiated every time a Vue application boots up. So one of them is called created. And I don't know if I have this life cycle. So you can see here, if you just Google it, um, view, view instance, there is life cycle hooks, instant life cycle hooks. You can see the created hook can be used to run code for an instance after an instance is created. So we can use that. You know, in Ember.js, this might be the init hook. The init hook, I think in in React, there's a different type of hook that's very similar. So we could do something like this, and what we want to do is retrieve the values and then set it to to do. So we can do this dot to dos, and we're going to do JSON dot parse, and we're going to grab the information out of local storage. So local storage dot get item. We're going to pass in our storage key again. And then if there's nothing in there, we're just going to pass in an empty array. So let's see what that looks like. 
All right, great. So now we have our two variables here, our two to-dos that we added in from earlier. So we delete one. We're going to say mow the lawn. Maybe another to-do is wash the car. And if we refresh it, you can see it's staying. So now we have the, these in local storage, which is great. And if we delete it and refresh it, it's staying. So we have completed that part. That's pretty easy. So we use the created lifestyle hook, life, uh, life cycle hook to retrieve the information every time the application is loaded. And then whenever we do an add or remove, we're simply setting the items in the to do again. So one other way, one other thing we can do here is let's say we want to edit an item. So let's take a look here. If we go back to our HTML CSS, the way, what we're doing right here is we're having this V4 directive and it's just looping through our to-dos. And for each to-do in our V4, this in this LI here, it's just creating a view with a label that has the title and then there's a button um, that's, does, that triggers the remove to-do on every click. And that's that little X that we saw here. So let's go ahead and add in something else. So I'm going to add in an input. And this will make sense in a minute. We'll do class equals edit type equals text. And we're going to use a V model. So we're going to bind the title to it. And we're going to use a couple of events here. So remember, you can use the, you, you can either type in V on or you can type in the at symbol. So that symbol is like the shorthand for it. So I'm going to put the shorthand for blur and it's going to trigger a new method. We're going to create a new method called to do a new function. And then we're also going to do a on our key up dot enter. We're also going to do the done edit to do and we'll just leave those two for now we might do add, add some other ones so what this is saying is when someone edits this new input that we're creating either when they um, click out and or they hit enter then it's going to go ahead and trigger this done edit so that would work there uh, but we need to do a couple of other things so in this label we're going to add in a new directive our new V on event. So when someone double clicks, we want it to go into our edit to do function that we're going to create. And we're going to pass in to do to it. So we also want to do it when someone double clicks on the title itself. And right now, right, right here, we have this class that shows to do. So we want to actually, there is a way we can dynamically create our classes. So we can do something like this. And we're going to check to see if editing, which is a variable we're going to create in a minute, if it's going to either show up or not show up, depending on to do equal equals edited to do. So what I want to try to do is I'm going to add this editing class here to this li if this this evaluates is true and what that'll do is this input here um, in our css itself it's display is none so it's not going to display but if we have it switched over to editing in our css then it will show up uh, so we don't have to worry about it so, but if it's not, if this edited to do isn't true, then it won't show up. So I'll show you how that works. So we're going to go back here. And so we're going to create these new methods. And first I'm going to create one, something here called edited to do. And we're having going to just, we're going to have equal null. And so right under here, we're going to have edit to do. This is a, function we created or method 
and we're gonna access the edited to do and we're gonna equal it to to do so if once someone double clicks on any of the to do's it's gonna pass in the to do and it's gonna equal edited to do then we're gonna create a done edit done edit that's also gonna have the to do passed into it and so if first we're gonna check if edited to do is even exists so if someone double clicks on it and there isn't there's nothing there we don't want it to do something so we're gonna return then we're going to do a this dot edited to do we're gonna put it back to null we're gonna change the title to to do dot title dot trim so that way we get any rid of any white space trailing white space and then we're going if they delete out the tile completely we want to delete it from the list so we remove to do to do so that is that so let's go ahead and see if that works so we're gonna go ahead and refresh it here so we have one problem it says to do dot title here so main js 33 There's a comma there that doesn't belong there. Okay, so here we go. So we're in here, so we're gonna type in, hello, uh, wash the car, mow the lawn. So if we double click on mow the lawn, now we get this little box here that you can see we can edit it. Make this a little bigger. You can see we can edit it. So now we can put mow the lawn again and now it went ahead and changed, which is perfect. Um, but you can notice though, we didn't really save it to local storage, so if we refresh it, it disappears. So the last thing we wanna do is to save it. So after you're done edit, we can go into here and just set it again. So we can do this. Let's see if that works. So I'm going to change it to one, two, three, and refresh it. Yep, it saved it. So now we can delete it, save it, and we can edit it. So perfect. So that is what we wanted to do now. We can add events, we can add to-dos, we can delete to-dos, we can edit to-dos. They are saved to local storage now. The next thing to do is to be able to filter for to-dos that are that have um, been completed and not completed. So we'll do that in our next video. If you like these type of videos, please click that subscribe button. And if you really like it, click that bell button. That really helps me out. Thanks.